Hi, this is Army Trumpet. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the gear that I like to bring camping. Right now I'm camping with my three sons. They're scattered around right now. Uh, we're in a secured area, very controlled environment. But some of these things I, I wouldn't need regularly here, but I brought them because when we would go camping in the woods, they're very good, maybe even a must-have. So here we are. We're going to pause and then focus on the gear I have. All right, here is the gear I brought. Well, some of it anyway. All right, starting here, I have some uh, 550 cord or paracord. This is really great when you need to tie some lashings down on your tent or if you need to secure some material to your pack or you just need to tie anything down. Duct tape. Just awesome stuff to have. You should carry this with you wherever you go. You never know when you might need duct tape. Duct tape? The thousand, yes, duct tape. <laughs> no, there are a thousand and one uses for it. Uh, here in the little sandwich baggie, I just brought some dried grass and uh, cotton fibers. I'm going to use this to help light the fire. I brought a lighter with me, but hopefully I won't need it. I'm going to try to use this little flint stick. I got this at Walmart. Real simple thing. It's just a little rod of flint. I'm going to use the back edge of this blade to strike it. Uh, this blade here, made by Master Knives. You see here it's a full tang. It's got some good weight on it. Wooden handle. It's got a saw on the back part of the blade. The saw is only about two inches long. Let me see. It's not very good. Yeah, here is it is. It? The saw right here. Oh. Yeah, wow. It's a very impractical thing. They put it on, I guess, just for looks. I love this because on the back end of the knife, you've got a little smashing surface here. So if you don't have a small hammer to crack something open, this is great has non-slip grip, non-slip back here, little grip right here. The only thing I don't like about this blade is it's stainless steel, but it was dirt cheap so I got it anyway. It's great just to have around the campfire. Here I've got a bow saw. Use this to cut down our firewood. I have a smaller blade that I bring to our uh, regular woodland camping. But I figured for ease of cutting, I'll bring the longer blade. And here, little glow sticks. These are invaluable, especially when you have young boys that don't like the dark. They're great for security. You could tie it to the top of your tent when you need to wander away to use the, uh, the wood line. Find your tent more easily in the dark. Again, these are just some of the things we bring. We also have a cooler filled with some water bottles over by our fire got a bucket with water if you have the luxury in the space bring a bucket fill it with a few gallons of water from a stream or a spigot if it's available you never know when your fire may or may not go out of control it's not a must-have but definitely it's a great thing to have around for safety Dad, making a fire all right so what we're gonna do we're gonna try to use this uh, flint rod back edge of the blade. Uh, you can use the back edge of the blade and scrape down, but you risk knocking your fire. What I want to try to do is brace it against the blade, this is what the saw is actually good for, and pull the flint away. This way I don't knock the fire. Hopefully I can get this thing going. See, I moved the knife too much. It's going! 
Not yet. Okay. We got a little going here. You see we have plenty of this laying around. Show this, Stevie. These are palm branches. Live in Hawaii. These are all over the place from fallen stalks. Let's slowly add some on top. Ugh. I smell smoke. Yes, you do smell smoke. It's coming up. It's coming up. Shh. Let's say it's in your head. Let's try to get a... More palm branches, please. Here. Are these things come down in solid sheets. You have to break them apart a little bit. Wow. Daddy, not this. Get that one later. Cool. And when these actually start burning well, we could start adding some heavier logs. Go ahead and stop. Okay, now uh, we're past the lighting stage. We have a small mound built up, a bunch of thin stuff. What I want to talk to you about now is the little fire ring we have here. You don't need to put stones around for the fire ring. A lot of people do. It helps contain the fire. It helps keep debris out of the fire. One thing you want to be careful though, um, you want to be careful what sort of rocks you choose. Uh, being on a volcanic island, we have nothing but igneous rocks laying around. That's uh, rocks straight from the heart of the volcano. They're forged in heat, so they're very stable. You want to try to avoid getting sedimentary stones like sandstone, limestone, shale, slate. A lot of those hold water. And I actually tried this when I was still living in Ohio. I put some sandstone and some slate next to the uh, campfire. And then my friends and I backed away. About a half hour later, all of the rocks had split in half and cracked. Um, that's one downfall. They hold water. The water expands inside the rock, and it can send shrapnel flying everywhere. You have to be very careful with that. Uh, one plus, aside from holding the fire inside the circle, is these. They're already getting pretty warm. They're going to serve like a uh, hearth in the house. They're going to radiate heat through the night. We don't have to worry about that right now. It's only going to get down to about 55 degrees tonight. But if you're in a very cold environment... You want as much heat radiating towards you as you can. Just something to think about. Be careful the rocks you choose. The bigger rocks, the better. Again, they hold and radiate more heat. We're uh, the morning after the father-son camping trip. You see, we uh, let our fire die down a little bit. We actually extinguished it overnight and had to rebuild it this morning, which is exceedingly difficult because everything was covered with a thick layer of dew. But we got it back up. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about how to clean up some water because sometimes you might be in a situation where you don't have a running faucet the way we have on our neighboring building. Um, if you uh, extinguish your fire, you're going to see in here the black charcoal. Well, this morning before I relit the fire, I took some of the old coals out. Now this would be best if you have a spare t-shirt or some other mesh material. I'm not going to do that because I think the boy's mommy would probably uh, she'd crucify me for ruining their shirts. But if you're in a situation where you need water, you don't care about ruining a t-shirt. Uh, but uh, an easy facsimile will just be this plastic bag. I'm going to take some of the old coals. The more you can get, the better. And you put them into your bag or into your t-shirt and you see the wood it's charred it's not ashy when we extinguished the fire the water took all the ash off of it you break this up a little bit alright now let's say you actually have this in a shirt. You could slowly, very slowly, run the water through the top of the charcoal and it'll help take out some of the contaminants. This isn't a cure-all. Your best bet is getting some iodine tablets or something like that from any local survival store or even Walmart. Don't play by the fire, it's still hot.
getting iodine tablets, it may make the water taste a little funny, but I'd rather take that over some bacteria growing in my stomach. But again, you slowly drip the water through here. It'll come out looking a little ashy, but again, you're looking for potable water, not necessarily palatable. That means it's healthy for you, even though it may not taste so great. So that's just one little, uh, one little trick you can do to help keep some water in your system if the water around you is questionable.